So welcome to this episode of Linkshire New Folk Movement. Um, today, I'm very pleased to say I'm speaking to Alice Catt all the way from the south of uh, Lincolnshire this time. We've had a lot of people up in the north and middle, so I'm, I'm glad we're, we've got some representation of geography there. Um, so Alice does all sorts of things. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, but do you want to just tell us a little bit uh, about yourself, Alice, and how you got into music and songwriting and that kind of stuff? Yeah, sure. So uh, my name's Alice Cat. Um, I've been making music for probably around six years now, like seriously recording. Um, and my style is 90s girl band meets Avril Lavigne, Alalis Morissette kind of vibe. Um, I just, somehow my music's naturally just come out sounding like that. So uh, uh, yeah, that's the kind of vibe I'm into. And then I also have a side project uh, with my friend Liam and we're called Fine. And that's uh, more of a indie pop sort of folk-esque kind of uh, project. Yeah, there's definitely similarities between the two. I can hear sort of like, like the the style is there, but yeah, the the Alice Cap band is a uh, yeah, it's it's very it's very authentic, kind of sincere, inspired by that kind of like '90s indie stuff, but it's not it's not derivative. I think so that that's quite good. So, uh, what got you into wanting to write songs then? Uh, so there's this really, there's an old TV series called Josie and the Pussycats and they made, made a film out of it in 2004, I think it was. And I remember I was like seven or eight years old. I was on holiday in Sri Lanka with my family. And I was like in the hotel room watching this TV thingy and it was this movie called Josie and the Pussycats. I remember seeing like these girls with these guitars and they were so cool. And I was like, right, I want a guitar now. <laughs> and then like I got listening to Avril Lavigne and Green Day. And then I don't know, it just kind of, it's just something that, was like creative and artistic inside of me that just inspired me I suppose from a young age and uh, then as I got older and learned how to play the guitar and uh, write my own music then I was away. <laughs> That's so cool because my partner's going to be so thrilled to know that it's Josie and the Pussycats that got you into songwriting because yeah. Oh. Yeah, she, she was a massive fan of it when it was a TV series oh, and okay. the film came out. <laughs> so good yeah she has watched the movie yeah she was oh, very <laughs> no one else has seen it <laughs> no she was so excited her and her friends like oh my god did you see the pussycat film so that, <laughs> that's really good news so you've got lots of uh sort of when when you're performing and when you're writing and sort of the recordings you've done you like we were saying we've got the alice cat bands and then we've got um fine and also i, I see that you perform just sort of on your own uh, not with the, the full band and everything like that. So I was I was looking at it and thinking, I wonder which, how, how do you see yourself in terms of like an artist? Do you think of yourself as a singer songwriter or do you think of yourself as like uh, a rock star? You know, because <laughs> you, you can pass as both. So, yeah. Yeah, in my brain, I just, I would love to be in a full band and to like play like that and play all my like original stuff out loud with the full band. But just circumstance and the universe hasn't brought that to me yet so um I do enjoy playing solo actually it's um a bit more of an intimate experience and to play the songs acoustically um without all the drums and electric guitars and stuff it kind of it allows me to experience my music in a different way and to show a different light to it but I can't wait to play full band when that happens because it will happen <laughs> <laughs> it will it will I'm sure it is quite it, it's a lot more, there's a lot more logistical challenges with uh, getting bands together but and i i think i agree with you that there's uh because you're yeah, playing in bands and stuff and it's great having your foot up on the monitor and screaming out and everybody getting really into it but then when you strip the songs back and you just do them on your own i think you do discover things about them that you perhaps didn't appreciate <laughs> in your own song sometimes so yeah i, I could totally see that um I was also wondering because you're quite uh you've got quite a back catalogue already you know there's there's a lot of material out there by you and, and original stuff you know all, all original stuff things i was looking at and i wondered uh do you do covers do you do you ever play covers yeah um i, I love doing covers actually one of my favorite ones to do that i've since i've started doing it i do it in literally every single set i do is um I want to be like you from the Jungle Book. <laughs> um, I played a gig one day and it was like an animal themed, I don't know why, it was an animal themed gig and they were like, you need to play a song that's animal related. And I was like, I've got no idea. And then I was like, oh, the Jungle Book. <laughs> so yeah, I started playing that then ever since then. Um, 
when I played, I played Boston, um, was it Party in the Park? I'm not sure what they called it the year before last, but I did like an ABBA cover there. And um, one of the songs that I have of my very first uh, LP that I put out, it's um, The Chords are the Same, The Chords to Run by Snow Patrol. Oh, and, yeah. Um, yeah, so like I tagged that on at the end of the song just for fun. Um, but no, I love doing covers. Um, I quite like to do more, actually. I think perhaps it's more of a full band um, venture. So you can really like do the cover justice. Yes, uh, I, I think that's really true. With the full band, you get like the full experience of that, that thing. I, I, doing, <laughs> how, does, how do you go about the Jungle Book one? Do you kind of keep it quite true to the original or do you kind of twist it about a bit? Yeah, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll tell you a little something as well. So um, the Jonas Brothers also covered this song. So <laughs> when I was looking at how to play it, I was watching them on YouTube and then I was like listening to like the the Disney version and um, it's got kind of like a jazz swing to it. It's like, da, 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 da. And it's like, it, it works on guitar and you can actually give it like a jazzy kind of vibe. Um, yeah. And then put your own spell in it as well. So. <laughs> That's really good. I would very much like to see that because I, I was also thinking um, about with <laughs> this interview that I've seen lots of things that you uh, were playing at that I've nearly played or, or you've played at the same place. Have you done Badger Fest? Yeah, I I think Badger Fest, yeah, 2019, yeah. Yeah, and I've I've successfully missed you. I'm afraid. No, that that sounds wrong. That sounds like I was trying to, but no, no. I was like, oh yeah, I'll have to go see Alice Cax. So I've heard loads of good things about you, and, and sort of finding out more about you. It's been really great. So you obviously do play out when we can live quite a lot, and I say you've got quite a, a back catalogue, and your recordings are really really high quality. You know, they're they're, they're really really good. They sound sort of like proper professional. Um, that, that sounds again a little bit rude. Of course, you're a proper professional. <laughs> I don't agree yeah, with yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> but um, I was thinking, would you, if you could only do one, but be super, super successful and have like a, a billion pounds out of it, but you couldn't do the other one, would you gig live or would you do recordings? Oh, that is really tough because you you want to be like authentic and say gig gig live. I mean, I'm naturally drawn to that because. You're, you're getting out there you're meeting people and it's a very like expressive great kind of like feeling that you can get from it but I've enjoyed recording in the studio so much and as you listen to different music you uh, learn different ways of recording and um, like recently I've been adding a lot of synth elements into my songs so I get so much pleasure from sitting with my little midi keyboard <laughs> um, so you know what that's a really tough question because you know studio time it's just you and the producer that you're working with so it's really like you can focus in on that whereas when you're playing a live gig there's a lot of kind of extraneous you're like you're thinking about the crowd you're thinking about your instrument you're thinking about sound um <laughs> i'm so indecisive <laughs> oh, yeah. come on you gotta pick one <laughs> okay i'll go with uh, playing live Play love, yeah. stay, stay authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stick it to the man, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you say? Stick it to the man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not hardcore unless you live hardcore. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Perhaps not as hardcore as I like to think I am, then. No. <laughs> I changed the tap for, uh, washer yesterday. That was that was my big hardcore success. Wow. Yeah, that's a good life skill to have, you know. Yeah, I, I did flood the bathroom, but uh, other than that, it was a complete success. Mm. You fixed your whoopsies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flooded it, but fixed it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it was okay. Um, <laughs> the uh, next question I had, well, well, just a general question, really, sort of uh, for things. What have you got planned next? Because I saw you had an album out in September and obviously we've been doing this what have you been doing during lockdown and what can we expect to see from you yeah so after I kind of like have this mentality that once an album's finished I'll take some time just to sit with the songs and wait to start recording again but I think probably like not even a week after I put out telephone conversations my mind was like buzzing with ideas and you just get all this inspiration I think not being able to go out and do stuff there's a lot more time to go inside and think internally and then by by default a lot more music comes out so I'm actually working on new material at the moment um, it's a bit slower because it's difficult to record remotely during lockdown the guy I produced with um, Sam Loose he is incredible um, any band that wants 
recording just go and speak to Sam Lucid NA Studios because he's insane literally he brings everything to life um but yeah so that's what I've been working on um fine I've been working on a new album as well it was due to be out last year but because of lockdown and Liam lives in Sheffield at the minute so it's hard to record mm -hmm. but um I can't wait to be able to put some more stuff out so there's going to be loads happening then 2021 so much, so yeah <laughs> that's really good it's really exciting i think i think uh, for a lot of people it has been that the lockdown has been a real opportunity mm. to focus on the writing and stuff so i think once we get back out gigging i think there's going to be just a wealth of new stuff and everyone's going to be really raring for it and things like that so they uh, just to reiterate as well the the album is telephone conversations isn't it yeah so that's all up on spotify and all that kind of stuff everywhere and anywhere so i've just got some quick fire questions for you now alice so okay so you're really gonna have to get in the zone okay i'm sorry so, we've already established how indecisive i am so okay it's just <laughs> yeah yeah and these are these are all either or questions as well it's friend, so. it's friend to be that game isn't it yes it's a little bit like yeah, yeah it's, it's like yeah would you rather kind of thing yeah so the first one is pickled onion or roast beef monster munch oh pickled onion straight away no problem hesitation there that's Pretty really sick. good yeah that's 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 exactly the right answer i have this argument with my friends all the time loads of them think roast beef and they're wrong yeah, they are totally wrong, totally you remember wrong. The that had like blue in them and you ate them and it turned your tongue blue no i don't remember that uh, are you sure, sure that's a real thing honestly i've asked someone else the same thing they couldn't remember maybe it's a dream <laughs> Well, if walkers happen to see this and they haven't already done that, then I'm sure they'll be right. <laughs> no, I don't. I'll, I'm going to research that after. Right. So next one uh, is in the mosh pit or watching from a balcony. I'm a balcony watcher. Really, I really am. Um, I like to uh, take in the whole thing. There are occasions where I'll go like into the mosh pit. Um, mosh pit. I'm not like... A... <laughs> I'm a bit precious for mosh pits to be fair but if it's like um there's a band that I love called Tonight Alive and Jenna the singer she called it a friendly dance pit and that seemed quite safe so I do enjoy kind of like being in that just for the really energetic parts maybe like five percent of the time but 95 percent of the time happy on the balcony just enjoying so the music yeah yeah that's fair enough yeah I, I I I like metal and stuff like that yeah and you have have you heard of a wall of death yeah oh my yes i've seen mm. one of those happen yeah yeah and there's i can't remember the name of the band but they do a wall of love um oh. so they, they line everybody up and then the drop yeah. comes and everyone charges and gives each other's hugs that's the sweetest thing i'd love to do that yeah that would be nice um yeah. uh, last one then and this is the important one oh god pressure yeah <laughs> would you rather have an army of squirrels or an army of pigeons that obeyed your every command well squirrels because they're cute and they're sweet and they can scurry around the forest I, I don't mind pigeons but I've seen a lot of videos of pigeons just like walking onto the tube or walking into the shop they seem like a little bit of an obnoxious animal to me so um I'll go with the squirrels so you heard it here first pigeons are obnoxious animals <laughs> Have you not seen those yeah, YouTube videos of squirrels like jumping on children's faces? I've not seen those. I might change my oh, mind. Actually. Yeah. Well, as an army, they'd they, they'd be quite a formidable force. I think. Yeah, they can like scurry along the ground, go up the trees, fly. Yeah. You get flying squirrels, don't you? Hey. You do. Yeah. And I feel like with pigeons, if someone dropped their fries, they'd just abandon me and go and eat the fries. They could be really fickle like that. I think you might be right. Yeah yeah okay that, <laughs> the pigeon is not a loyal enough creature yeah. form of vermin <laughs> yeah. oh, but i mean all, all creatures are beautiful but in this instance <laughs> i always think the axolotls quite hard to uh oh, to yeah, love yeah yeah they're all <laughs> pale and with the frilly bits they are quite are they, cool yeah, yeah. Mm. Are they like um are they um an albino animal or are they not they just look at so they're kind of like little red eyes and they're like white yeah yeah i don't know if they're albino or if that's just the way they are if yeah. you know what i mean mm. again that's another thing to find out <laughs> we'll have to show that to convene and discuss what we found out about yeah 
Yeah, yeah, this is going to be a Sunday afternoon well spent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining me, Alice. It's been a real pleasure to uh, get to meet you and talk to you and also finding out a bit about you before the interview and hearing all the music. It's, it's all fantastic. So do you want to tell us, I'm going to put on um, a couple of songs. I haven't decided which of the fine ones I'm going to pick one of those and put on at the end. But do you want to tell us about what uh, video I'm going to put on after this? Yeah, so um, up next there is a video, it was a promotion video from uh, my album Telephone Conversations and the song behind it is Burnout, which is the like, kind of interlude track um, on my record. It was actually originally a full song, but we couldn't get it to sit right. So I said to Sam, I was like, look, let's just make this like a one minute like interlude kind of track. So um, yeah, and it kind of showcases the vibe um, of, of the album, I guess, really. So yeah, enjoy watching that and I hope you enjoy the track by Fine as well. Great. Thanks for having me. Thank, you're welcome. Thanks very much, then, Kat. You take care. Bye. <laughs> Yeah. 